Okay, hey everybody, thank you for joining another uh, episode. What did we, we land on? Are we episodes? All right, episodes um, of the Ketonian Corner. Uh, this week, we are going to talk about meal prep. So, pretty excited about that. Um, do you want to uh, get into discussion now about what our uh, upcoming is going to be, or do you want to wait until later in the show to... Yeah, good, upcoming. All right, so we do have um, some pretty exciting things coming about. As all of you should know, uh, John and I both visited um, the KetoCon in Austin, Texas at the beginning of September, met a lot of really amazing people. So we have actually reached out to many of them, um, and we are going to start doing interviews in our shows. So uh, pretty stoked about that. We have our first one that we're going to have to pre-record so that we can accommodate schedules. But we're going to uh, have our first one next week. Uh, so we'll, John and I will get together with one of the vendors from KetoCon and uh, get that recorded. So it'll be just like Tom's episode on fasting. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about experiences and stuff. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a little bit of v- variety in the topics. So. Yeah, so really would like you guys' feedback after that if it's something that you like. Um, we would love to keep doing it. Uh, Like I said, we did meet a lot of really awesome keto people down there, so we would love to bring their stories to you guys. So, um, all right, well, this week we are doing meal prep. So, yeah, and meal prep is 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 sometimes is a conversation. So, you know, if you guys got questions, feel free to hit us up in the chat as we go. And uh, but uh, we're going to talk about a couple of different concepts, just generically what meal prep kind of is. And then we're going to talk about stacking meals. And then we're going to talk about uh, what we both do for what I call an emergency meal. And then if we get a chance, we'll we'll kind of uh, get into some of our what of our default go-to meals are. So when it comes to mass prep, everybody does things differently. So how do you do it? So I do probably different than most people, but I've mentioned this before. Pretty lazy. After work, I don't like to go home and cook or clean up the kitchen, so I choose to do um, all my meal prep and cooking in one day. So generally, I pick Sundays. Um, I do all of my meals that would include breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, So I, um, you know, whatever I'm, I, I do all my meal planning the day before, so I know what I'm going to make. Take everything out of the freezer and then spend really the entire day. For how many days? For a full, uh, anywhere between five and seven. So I generally go to my husband and ask him if he wants me to cook for the entire week or if he would like to do do impromptu for the weekend. Um, depending on what we have going on, I will do just the work week. And then he will, you know, maybe grill or we'll pick something different for Saturday or Sunday. Um, and then, but minimum it's five days of three meals. Sometimes it's a full seven days. Gotcha. So. Well, I never can prep that <laughs> far in advance. I don't know what I'm doing in two days, let alone three. Although I do try to, to do something very similar. So where, where I think we kind of align, you said during the weekend you do... You do uh, some type of mass prep. I usually mass prep uh, non-starchy vegetables. I tend to, on the weekends, while I'm cooking bacon with the kids, take the opportunity to leverage the bacon grease and everything else to kind of get some, I'm going to call it uh, vegetable go-tos. I know we, we I tend to eat a little more vegetables on, than you do. But then I can slice, saute, for the for because uh, I have little kids, I tend to cut up, you know, bell peppers or cucumbers. Kind of do some of that mass prep stuff, because uh, I I will get to the emergency meals. I uh, will probably talk a little bit more about this, but I definitely like to have some things on tap, so I, I don't have a you know just a ki- kid looking at me kind of with those eyes and me scrambling. So going back to where you're at though. Um, if you just mass prepping once a week, can you walk me through when when do you decide what you're having for the week, and then when do you cook? Like where, you, and then add in where, when you go shopping. So, um, so I have most meat on hand. Um, we've talked about it before. I've purchased uh, not long ago um, a half a pig and a half a 
uh, cow. So I have a lot of meat on hand. Um, in general, I, if I'm well prepared for the week, I will do my uh, meal prep um, or my, my menu prep on su- uh, Saturday evening. Um, sometimes I don't do it until Sunday morning. Um, after I decide what I'm making for the week, if I don't have anything on hand, I send a list with the husband to trot off to the store to bring me back what I need. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, again, I just pick the whole day. Um, I usually, I, I've been trying to utilize my crock pot so that I don't have to physically be spending a bunch of hours. I can still do other things on Sundays, but, um, I do generally stay home on Sunday just so that I have um, all of the meals done for the week. So um, crock pots are great for me because, again, if it's one of my lazy weeks and I don't have my meals prepared or my menu prepared, I shouldn't say meals, my menu prepared the day before, uh, I can put sort of frozen meat into a crock pot and I don't have to worry about waiting for it to thaw out. So. Okay, so you try to just do shopping once a week. I do. Yeah, except for Costco because for some reason I have an addiction to that place and it's so close to work that I'll swing in there two or three times a, a week to grab whatever. But I have a similar Costco problem. So <laughs> I will not negotiate with that. So. Um, I tend to uh, see in my life, uh, I would say that I, we do Costco's on Wednesday usually and then we do regular store. By we, I mean my my uh, my mom is my nanny, and she actually goes to the store for me. Uh, if it's like a Kroger or something like that, Costco. So, so I would say we do mass prep at least twice a week. So, uh, what's the difference between mass prep and like stacking meals in your mind? When you say mass prep, you mentioned your husband grilling. When you grill, is are you grilling one meat and then you are using that throughout the week? Um, it depends on what it is. So um, he likes to do burgers for his lunches. So we'll just fill the grill up with nothing but burgers, and then that week we'll have burgers every day for lunch. Um, now, I've been smoking, so when I do that, I do a variety of different stuff. This last time I smoked uh, pork belly. Uh, a tenderloin, which, just as a side note, not recommend. Not not a good choice to smoke. Yeah, there's um, no, there's, yeah it there's was no. There's no fat in. It that. was dry and not very good. So it, after a couple of days, turned into a different dish because it was not good enough to eat. Um, but yeah, I had um, brisket, uh, ribs. So again, it just depends on um, what I'm doing with it, um, whether or not that I do one or if we do multiple. So the actual grill itself generally is one um, one type of meat, but if I pull the smoker out, then I'll do a lot. So for me, I think that's a perfect definition of meal stacking. So that's when you start to either prep another meat for a different meal at the same time you're already cooking. So the rule where you said that every time we have the grill, we fill the grill, That's the, I follow the same principles at my house. Um, it, whether it's hamburgers, which are usually easy because they're frozen and we throw them on. Good, I'm not the only one who no, doesn't thaw my burgers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, do people do that? Thaw their burgers? Apparently. Oh, okay. Well, I always throw them on frozen. But anyway, uh, here's no, over there. I'm assuming when you say frozen, you guys have pre-made them. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, see, I, I, I got them from the butcher pre-made. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting conversation. But, but to your point, yes, I tend to pay a little bit more uh, when it comes to processing meat to get my hamburgers pre-pattied so it's easier. And then I put the little uh, parchment paper in between them so I can just pull them yeah. off. Same with uh, at Costco. I tend to like the salmon patties. If I don't have a lot of meat or sorry, fish that I've eaten lately, I tend to throw a couple of those salmon patties or, or uh, fillets of salmon on the grill. Um, but the point is, you take the opportunity when you have, let's say, whether it's the grill, the oven, or whatever, you take that opportunity to pre-think about what you can do at the same time, whether that be a pan of vegetables that you throw on the lower rack of the oven, or it be, you know, hamburgers that you're going to use for your lunches that you put in there. 
The uh, other thing we talked about when it came to meal stacking is actually reusing the meat. So you're talking about the crock pot, and then you talked about the uh, tenderloin. So obviously the failed tenderloin was not part of your plan, but you used that meat, and then what did you do with it? You said it turned into another dish. Yeah, so after um, we smoked it, <laughs> um, I ended up shredding it up and putting it into the Instant Pot and turning it into um, uh, taco meat. So I added a little uh, chicken broth to it and then covered it with taco seasoning and cooked it on the slow cooker setting um, for about an hour and just let it, it was slow and low, so it absorbed a lot of the liquid and then uh, had the flavor for the taco seasoning. So that's what we ended up changing it to. (laughs) So... B, I do something very similar, uh, whether it be a crock pot whole chicken or a, a, like a, some type of you know pork roast or whatever, we'll actually have the chicken or the roast for a meal, and then we will shred the chicken for fajitas, or we'll shred the pork for um, whatever they call it when you shred pork, pan fry it, I can't remember, canita, 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 canita. Yeah. I love carnitas for some reason. I think it's the sautéing them and getting the crispy edges. But uh, I definitely think that's that's a, a well kind of uh, plan thing. I mean, if you start to think about that, um, your crock pot, you know, if it's a small one, maybe you get just a little bit bigger one. And, you know, a whole chicken, just buy a little bit bigger chicken, you can already have pre-cooked. So what kind of time would you say that saves from a... Uh, overarching. So I know you're complaining about spending two hours in the kitchen recently, right? So if you're just leveraging something like that, so the shredded chicken, right? So it's when it, when I'm cleaning up the crock pot, I just sh- shred it and throw it in a container, and then I'm just sautéing it. Makes the you know the fajitas pretty quick. Yeah. So for me with the with the loin, um, again I had the smoker full, so it didn't take me extra time for the loin. Um, But the time to put into the next dish literally was probably 20 minutes of shredding. Um, And then I threw it into the Instapot, and that was the meal. Um, Now, I, I never really have ever done that. Not that I haven't taken things and changed it into it, but that's not a typical uh, routine for me. So I will thank you, John, because, um, my husband was not going to eat the meat, and he was he was ready to throw it out because it really was bad. <laughs> um, but through conversations with you, um, I know that that's how you function um, on a on a typical basis. So I just kept thinking, okay, I've got kind of a strong flavor from the smoke. What can I put in there that's going to overpower that and complement it at, at the same time? So and tacos are always that way. Yeah fajita seasoning any of that stuff um the seasoning packets that you get from the store aren't very good they tend to have a lot of uh i don't know whatever whatever term you want to use they have a lot of fillers and stuff in them but if you just it's very easy to google taco seasoning fajita seasoning you know there's really only four four or five ingredients so it's pretty fast i i mass prep that too i do as well we've got a shaker that we just keep refilling, and so it's good for a couple months, and then we refill the shaker. Yep. Went to Walmart, bought one of the big containers with the screw-on lid. I fill it up probably <laughs> once or twice, uh, once every couple of months, and then just keep it stored in the in the pantry. So yeah. I've got it on hand. <clears throat> so you mentioned a little bit about in your grilling, putting hamburgers, and then so what process do you do to kind of lay that out? Are you are you grilling full five days of hamburgers and then you're eating hamburgers for lunch every day? or what? We do, yeah. Um, and I know that that's not typical of most people. They don't – I am a creature of habit, so I don't know if I've told the story before, but for an entire year, literally, I ate burgers for lunch and for dinner. And when I started dating my husband – he thought that I was the biggest weirdo in the world because that's all he ever saw me eat. But I truly, that is all I ate was burgers, two burgers for lunch, two burgers for dinner. Um, And so I started feeling self-conscious about it and I stopped. But 
it never has bothered me to eat the same thing every day if it's a food that I like. Um, I know most people aren't like that, which I don't understand that. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> but, I'm a variety guy yeah. myself. So I would never grill an entire thing. That's why I would do like two burgers, two salmon patties, and uh, kind of to walk everybody through what I do, uh, I, I have a mini crock pot, and that's kind of like my staple, and then I have multiple inserts. So when I mass prep the non-starchy vegetables, whatever they happen to be, I rotate those also. On a Friday or Saturday, I put those vegetables in the bottom of my lunch container. And then throughout the week, as I have, let's say, for ex the example, the things we've talked about, I would uh, put the shredded chicken, throw it in there, and then put some more vegetables on top, whatever vegetables that we cook throughout the week. Uh, so I always have a base of, for the most part, a always have some sautéed vegetables that are the base for my lunch because I I'm a I'm a vegetable guy I need to I need to work <laughs> on that <clears throat> um, I, I'm bred into the uh, I have to have vegetables or I feel like I'm not healthy you know those things like all those things we talk about like yeah, yeah so I admit it I, I realize I have a problem but uh, that said um, just to kind of talk about a little bit more on the ease of prep. We talked about cutting some vegetables for the kids, those type of things, but like I'm pretty darn lazy also when it comes to my vegetables. So I'll just kind of give you a couple of options I rotate through. Um, it's very easy to buy the frozen green beans at Costco. They're organic. They're easy, and they're always available in my freezer. I always have a bag, so if I don't have something, then that's where I go. If I've got vegetables out of the garden or, or that did not get eaten throughout the week, it's like that's my time of the, you know, what, what do you call it when you're the dad garbage disposal? I don't know what, what, what that, that uh, relates to when it comes to vegetables, but any vegetables that look like they might be going bad end up in my I mean, So sometimes that really looks ugly. I'm not going to lie. It's not pretty. Uh, and then sometimes I have to, to uh, you know, if, if, depending on the vegetables, start sautéing something and then move to. So if if I have a a pepper, for example, that's it's uh, definitely looking like it's starting to wrinkle, I will cut it up and sauté it till it starts to turn. And then uh, one of my favorite things currently is Costco has a pre-cut, it's a salad, and it's. Cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts, uh, and I don't know what else, but it, uh, kale. It's like seven things. I don't even know what it is, but it comes with dressing. And I just open it up, take the dressing packets and the croutons. I think it may have uh, cranberries also, but they're sugar-coated, so I throw all those in the trash. <laughs> I'm not joking. And then I just pour the, th pour the vegetables on top. So all Brussels sprouts? Well, they cut them, but yeah. Really? Huh. Yeah, they slice them. Uh, so it's like a slaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a slaw. Have you, you've never seen slawed Brussels sprouts? I have not, but I have to be honest that probably six months ago is the first time I've ever eaten a Brussels sprout. <laughs> so I personally love Brussels sprouts. You cut them. I do like them. Um, They're way better, like of oven, yeah, oven roasted, whatever, for lack of a better term. But yeah. Um, but I, but I, but my point is, before I got like so sidetracked, is that that slawed vegetables. I mean, they're they're all cut up, so they're almost the same size, and then they cook very evenly, and then it's super fast, and then that can be like my base for multiple lunches. Yeah, I do similar. Um, again, we're pretty limited on what we eat for vegetables. What are the two vegetables? Brian hates them. Um, but the. Uh, I do buy uh, Costco uh, broccoli. They seem to have the best broccoli. Frozen? Yeah, frozen broccoli. Yeah. yeah. I also... It's a big pack and it's got yeah. four little packs inside. Yep. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they have colored cauliflowers. And I buy that. Yeah. I buy that as well. Um, oh, I have no idea, but I'm sure I can look it up. <laughs> um, oddly enough... You probably the, have a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, my husband actually likes the... Uh, cauliflower. I'm not a fan. 
Um, so just I don't so really care. The color cauliflower tastes exactly like the regular cauliflower. Yes. I, I don't know what, why it's they it's color it. Color. It's is there some some it's, florets or okay. yeah, purple, purple and green, green, yellow. Green. Yeah, and, and it's not like they dye it. So it's like it's, the colored carrots. Have you yeah. ever seen colored yeah. carrots? Similar or situation. White or white. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just a. But. Or none of them. Yeah. They cover. Oh yeah. Mm, I love asparagus. That's, I do love some asparagus. Do you know I eat it raw? Did you talk about this? Yeah. It sounds really weird, but it's actually not bad. Raw all the time. You eat it raw all the time? If, if you get the young ones, the small, <clears throat> they're real, they're sweet and they're uh, real crisp. If you get oh, the yeah, larger really ones, crispy. yeah, they're more fibrous. Well, we, I would grow it at our house. But yeah, Where in the world did we take a left turn on this? <laughs> I, know, I know, but now we're talking about raw asparagus. <laughs> I, go down, I make a special trip to go down to Springfield and buy it because there's an orchard down there. Yeah. Springfield orchard that has fresh asparagus? Yes. Nice. I buy 10 pounds. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Man. <laughs> we won't talk about... Anyway, that's sidetrack. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's fine. So... When you have 10 pounds of asparagus, that's, uh, there can't be anything more mass prep than that. <laughs> so what do you do with 10 pounds of asparagus? I can, you know, I can. I oh, you can, can it? I've canned stuff. Well, this is frozen. So oh, I'm, used, I'm okay. used to doing 10, prep 10 stuff. Pounds of frozen. I'm used gotcha. to doing prep work because to me, I can. You can't can asparagus. Yeah, you, you can. can. Doesn't, it, doesn't it turn to like... <clears throat> you probably pickle it. That's how I used to eat it. Really? Pan, yeah. Oh, but it's so like mushy. It is. It is mushy. Yes. Yeah. Wow, we do it. take I, a turn. I probably, I probably eat two or three pounds fresh, and then the rest of it I freeze. Yeah, I can totally, I, can, yeah, I can totally OD on asparagus. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, great, great concepts. I, I, I think you're, we're kind of giving a whole bunch of ideas there, which I, I really like. So. Can I ask a question? Because I, yeah. keep, I hear you guys just talking about one thing for your meal. Do you have other things besides? So you're you're talking about having hamburgers. Do you have anything else with that? Um, in general, no. When you, when you do your menus, remember she's you? the crazy one. So I am the crazy general, one. What are you What are you planning? Are you planning only one thing per meal? Um and. and when you are planning, are you planning your ratios? I do not. Good question. Yeah, it, it is a great question, and I do not do it. So um, I plan the menu, depending on what the meat is, whether or not I have a, something with it. So um, in general, if I cook um, pork belly, I will do um, uh, Brussels sprouts with those. Um, for lunches, we generally only have one thing. So if we do, um, if we do burgers, that's all we have. So like today, I have a burger with cheese. That's what I'll eat. Sometimes he'll put bacon on it. Um, for dinners, though, and again, it's going to depend on the meat. Um, but if we did a steak, I don't generally do um, vegetables in addition to that. And it really comes down to my husband doesn't like that many vegetables. So for me, it's really all in the flavor palette. Um, I don't think there's many vegetables that he will eat that really go with um, the steaks. So that's generally what I will do. Now, we do eat a lot of avocado. So I guess you could technically say that um, I have additional because we do each eat a half avocado most evenings for dinner. Um, But as far as like making green beans or something like that, um, yeah, it really is limited. Um, Vegetables are limited to fish um, and uh, pork belly mostly. Vegetables are limited to fish? It is, yeah. So you have vegetables on the side. I mean, fish. Most of the time, if oh. we have beef, we do not have a vegetable, um, ex- except avocado. Well, the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Which I think we've already established. <laughs> but I mean, even when we went to the steakhouse in in uh, in Texas, mm-hmm. I got green beans because I just felt like I had to have something. Yeah, and I got only meat. <laughs> which, which in hindsight, it probably could have been okay with just the meat. But, but to your you, macronutrient just ratio question, real quick, a quick yeah, question. Yeah. So, do you, do you, uh, 
watch the amount that you're eating. I do, absolutely. So, so before I eat anything. Calories or weigh or whatever, but yeah. when you so, plan that menu. Uh, not when I plan the menu. So I just make whatever we feel like eating for the week. And then as we dish it out for that meal, uh, we weigh everything. Um, so based on the weight, I know how many grams of protein um, okay. there is. Yeah. Pre-cooked or post-cooked? Um, I do it post-cooked. I know they say it's supposed to be pre-cooked, but it or can they, be, yeah. They are always right. But, I mean, it can't be that much different, right? It's it's a range that you need to be within, and so I'm not going to stress that much about cooking. Well, so. Yeah, <laughs> cooked or uncooked, right? I mean, I just, I'm just a rebel like that, John. I don't track, I don't, <laughs> I, uh, I don't track anything. I think we've already, I feel like I should. I keep saying that, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> I do want to do it, but but to your macronutrient ratio. Well, that's I what am, I was getting at because I, although I don't track anything, I am, uh, I guess, aware. So, for example, if I know that what I had for lunch was more vegetable and protein and not as much fat, I will I will make sure I put NTC oil on my vegetables at dinner. So I do uh, loose, like hold your, you know, lick your finger, hold it up in the air and feel which way the wind is going. But I, uh, I tried tracking once and yeah. I, I really struggle with it. So I guess my only question about it is, is and, I, and I don't know if it's a real thing or not. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Yeah, but, but they, I've heard about getting too much protein. Absolutely. And, oh, and that, that, <laughs> that going and, and that discharging that is not a good thing. Did she, yeah. Did she, did, she, did she prep you for this question? Seriously. <laughs> okay, so so just to kind of no, back up a step. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can detect her. Ask John about so uh, out, out of out of ironically, one of the people that we met at, actually at Ketocon, uh, I started following on social media, and I and everyone knows I suck at social media. I'll admit it. But but YouTube lets me know when you post something new. <laughs> so uh, on my phone, I haven't. That's the one notification I haven't shut off yet. So this morning, I'm not joking. This is this happened this morning. He uh, he had a lot of protein, more protein than normal, and he tested his blood ketone levels, and he was super low for where he is. And I, I, I'm not joking. I sent her an email linked to the thing, and I said, oh, my goodness, this is exactly what you're telling me. And he and, feels terrible. And he was so, talking about, yeah, and I was like, I know this happens to me, and I'm just not dealing with the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, so the fact that you asked that question is actually yeah. very funny. Which kind of goes to the conversation that we had early on. I do not personally track anymore. I still weigh everything. I know exactly what I'm putting in my mouth. But I've done this long enough that I can tell you that an 80% um, quarter pound cheeseburger is about 25 grams of protein. So mentally I calculate and I know in the ballpark of where I'm at. But if somebody doesn't know what that is and what that piece of meat equates to in grams of protein, that's when I think you should track for an ex- and that's what I'm, a that's period what I'm of time. Doing right now. Yeah, until you got, retrain your mind to know what that piece of meat represents to your body. Yeah, and just to pitch, there, there's a MyFitnessPal group that meets actually in yeah. the same location. So if that's something you're interested in, I know, you know, maybe we should throw out a challenge and make ourselves do it. I don't know. I, I probably could, could stand for that, but uh, maybe when I come back from vacation. Because <laughs> I don't want to commit to anything. Yeah. Now, I use chronometer, to be honest. Um, and the reason that I use it is because the data that they have stored in their databases are actually validated. My, I used to use my fitness pal, And although I think tracking in general is a good thing, um, especially in the beginning, my fitness pal was giving me more stress than I needed because their data is all over the place. Anybody can insert data that goes out to the masses. So if you plug in um, an avocado, for instance, it's going to come back with this crazy macros on an avocado. It was causing me way too much stress, so I switched um, to, and it, it, I can put it in the show notes, um, it's specific to keto. Uh, 
this app that I have, yeah. They're, they have a general one for just anybody, but they also have sliced off a piece um, that will give you specifics to keto. Um, so I, that's the one I use personally, and again, I don't do it frequently. But if I introduce something new, I'll plug it in there just so that I know um, you know, what that is. If it's a meat, like pork belly, for instance, before I had ever eaten it, I had no idea what the fat protein ratio was. So I did plug it in and stick it. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. I, <laughs> I have two in my freezer. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it in here and feed it to you guys. <laughs> I'll try it. Uh, so we kind of got off topic, but just to kind of summarize, you do your mass prep once a week, you're planning once a week, but <clears> I am way more uh, I guess uh, non-planning. Yeah. I plan at work, so I don't want to plan <laughs> uh, my life, personal life. So I'm more of a at least twice a week trying to figure out, but I definitely do the meal stacking. So <clears throat> the other thing that we said we'd talk about it, uh, just to make sure we cover it and we don't run out of time, is our emergency meals. So let's set the stage. You're at work late, you, things are not going well, you had plans and they got canceled and you show up at your house and you're not prepared. So what do you do? And I think this is a scenario that everybody goes through at some point, if not, if not uh, during the week. Or there's, or there's construction in the <laughs> conference room you're in and they're beating down the door to the wall. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? And uh, do you have an emergency meal that you, your go-to emergency meal? I do. Um, oh, my God. Hamburger. <laughs> well, there is that. I always have um, frozen hamburger patties in my refrigerator, but that requires a little bit of thought uh, to actually cook those. So if my husband does not want to use the grill, uh, I always have frozen fish, so either tilapia or salmon. Um and everybody knows that I am the gadget queen, so I do have a gadget sitting in the corner of my cabinet that is um, an air fryer. So I will throw the salmon into the air fryer and walk away from it, and 20 minutes later I have dinner. So, and I'll do salmon in there. Um, and again, well, for nights like that that I'm not prepared, I'll either do uh, broccoli or um, some cream spinach because they're quick and easy. So. Huh. So I would agree on the salmon. That tends to be my go-to. Uh, and then with any of the op all, any of the plethora of vegetables we already talked about, I almost always have vegetables in the refrigerator that are already cooked. You just have to warm them up. Um, the other thing that you're going to hate, because <laughs> I know you won't try these, is uh, the sardines. Now, I do have them in my cabinet. You Wait, wait, wait. You bought sardines? Because I feed them to my dog. Oh. <laughs> so if there were some kind of natural disaster, <laughs> I could survive <laughs> without electricity because I do have sardines. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, so Texas airport. I don't want to eat anything at the airport. I'm not joking. I had sardines in my bag. You can go, you can go check and put in your check luggage. I'm not joking. I ate, I just... Open them up and just ate them with a fork, like right there in the airport. I'm sure there's people yeah. staring at me, Van. Did you see that guy? <laughs> Did you smell that guy? That's yeah, what they were saying. Right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the plane. What are these? Uh, so there's all different varieties of uh, liquid. Uh, my uh, olive oil. I get them. You know, it's just fish and olive oil. The only two <clears> ingredients. Uh, I can't remember the brand. Uh, they're at they're, Costco. Uh, they're at Costco, of course, yes. Wild Wild Planet or something like that. They're, yours are not boneless, though, right? Or are they boneless? <clears throat> they're filleted. Okay. Uh, so, but they still have little teeny bones in them, but they're cooked, so you don't... Yeah, you know, like when you get... Well, because I... A lot of fish, like yeah, I saw somebody post on one of the social media that they had recently tried boneless skinless, and these, I think, are skinless. Because I buy the same from Costco. They've got skin on them, right? Do they? I well, I I've bought them other places. Yeah, well, thank There's goodness no they have no heads. It's not like anchovies, like you yeah. Get, like well, like because I've bought them on. other places, and like they have the silver skin, and the ones at Costco do not have those. So that's why I thought maybe those were skinless. Oh, well, maybe they are. I don't know. I'd have to go look at the package. But anyway, yeah. the point is, <laughs> eat the emergency meal, even if they may say, "Did you smell that guy?" 
They'll say, did you smell that healthy guy? Now, I have tried them, I will admit. John challenged me one day, and, and during the, one of the podcasts, I, I, yeah, I couldn't. I went to his desk to try them, and I just could not force myself. But as I was prepping my dog's food, because my dogs are as well keto, I did try it. Um, it is wait, not wait, wait, before. Wait, wait, wait. Before the stage, you came to my desk, wouldn't try them, but you, but you're fixing your dog food, and you're like, oh, I'll just try my dog's food. Okay, I'm getting the middle picture here. Well, you know, because if I had a gag and spit, I was at home alone, and I was not going to be witnessed by the anyone. Dog was still That's the right. The dog was still eating. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it wasn't horrible. Um, <laughs> it was not something that I would probably intentionally I, eat again. Did you get shirt <laughs> yeah. No, it's not <laughs> horrible. <laughs> I've eaten sardines probably my whole life, but I've eaten them in oil, which are probably not olive oil. Oh, are they really? And with, mm, and I, don't I always put them on crackers. Mmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't usually put them on crackers. Well, that wouldn't be you know, <laughs> That wouldn't be shit now. Correct. Unless you make unless you make your own crackers. That's right, and I have a great recipe for cheese crackers. <laughs> I make I make the sour cream and cream cheese crackers and chives, and it turned out very very well. Fresh chives, it's very. Mm hmm. And Any, we'll, we've only got a couple more minutes, so I just want to do a real quick. What are other <clears throat> super fast things? Uh, Costco has, or you can get anywhere. It doesn't have to be Costco. Has pre-riced cauliflower. That's a good. That's a go-to for me. Oh, look, I got. Yeah, some, and I'm uh, actually pretty stoked about that because they used to have frozen, and they don't have it anymore. So I thought they didn't carry it because, again, I don't go in the vegetable room. But now that I know that's where it is, vegetables. I'm all over it. Well, that's weird. They put the vegetables in the vegetable room. Well, they used to be in the frozen section. No, no, I, I, I'm following you. Um, so that's that's one thing, and and I, I there's a a bake. That I make that the like, like you would think if you're really craving loaded uh, loaded baked potato or a twice baked potato, you can do the same thing with cauliflower. You just mix all that stuff and yeah. put it in a casserole dish. Yeah, oddly that's what I did. Um, my Aud- husband threw Aud- a huge fit because you know again it's vegetable. It's vegetable. He loved it. Ended up eating the whole thing, mm-hmm. and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that karma? It, yeah. It's I don't know. I it tasted like cauliflower. Like, I, that is a vegetable that is supposed to take on other flavors, and it really didn't. So I've done it a couple of times. I did it as a macaroni and cheese, and I've done it as a loaded baked potato kind of. And it tasted okay. like cauliflower with cheese on it to me, well, got to be honest. I mean, I would imagine it would taste like, especially the, if, if it's a, trying to be like macaroni and cheese, I would imagine that would just taste like you poured cheese on top of golf. But it, it's not supposed I mean, like, to. What do you mean it's not supposed yeah. to? Yeah. <laughs> You're surprised. It was, yeah. Oh, weird. It's like cheese. <laughs> it was awful. I do not like it. Okay. So, uh, just to kind of finish. So now up. you guys know all the weird things about me. Well, you know, some of them. Every, I feel like through, through these episodes, we find out more and more. <laughs> So uh, to bring it back to things that aren't weird, what what are the what are the side things that you mass prep? I know, for example, you've been trying to get me to do. Uh, I, I still buy dressing. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. So anything like that? Do you do mayonnaise once a week? Uh, um. Yeah. And again, it depends. I mean, if we're doing burgers, he likes to eat mayonnaise on the burger, so I do have to make at least one batch a week. Um, if we're doing uh, just regular meals. I don't. We don't go through mayonnaise that much, so it's probably every two weeks. Um, but I like to have ranch dressing on hand. Um, I now have become the aunt with the chocolate. So when my nieces come to my house, I am expected to have this chocolate um, that I accidentally had some leftover icing, to be quite honest. But so now I have that in my refrigerator a lot. Um, it's a cocoa powder and butter, cream cheese. I don't know. I don't know what all I put in it, but it isn't. It actually is icing. (laughs) So I made... um, You you make a... Every week you make keto icing? Is that it? I do, because they... they, they, When they come to JoJo's house, they want chocolate. (laughs) Hey, man, when you got little kiddos, (laughs) they're six, so they're getting chocolate. 
<laughs> I know my daughter asks me to suck it all the time. But like we mentioned before, I do the 90% chocolate bars. Yeah. She doesn't know any better. All right, so we pretty much are out of time. Anything we missed in our prep when we talked through this? That Yes, before our next, well, I'm going to give you until we'll skip the next one when we do this again in a month. Is this a managed challenge again? Yes. What? I didn't do the first one. Why? I know, you know because. Public shaming doesn't work for me. We've already <laughs> talked this through. I made you a video. <laughs> it, you can just watch the video and, and just follow the instructions. What if I just watched the video and pretended I was doing it? <laughs> <laughs> then you will still be eating garbage mayonnaise. <laughs> Sorry, that's me. Okay. <laughs>